The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, how's everybody doing today? <laughs> I see, uh, I see Waco Dale on here. That's a nice touch, Dale. Thank you. Uh, hey, uh, we're here for the Insiders Open Forum. This is a very simple uh, type of a call. You ask questions or bring up a topic to discuss, and we will discuss it in an open forum. And uh, this requires your participation. So if you've got any kind of uh, questions or things that you'd like to talk about, it will be up to you to uh, ask those things. And if not, then we will be forced to bring up topics on our own. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and open the floor right now. Nobody emailed anything ahead of time, so if anybody's got something that you would like to cover or ask about or talk about, please bring that up right now and we'll talk to you. Give you just a second. You can type it in. If you want to raise your hand in the uh, console, then you can raise your hand and we'll talk to you there, okay? Either way. Anyone? Bueller? Bueller? All right, here we go. Mr. Chase, when doing a direct mail campaign, what is the best way to target this? Saturate an area or buy a list? Well, that's an interesting uh, question. It's going to depend on what you're trying to accomplish. Saturating an area is going to be definitely the cheapest way to do it because you can get a very, very inexpensive uh, mailing rate, but it's going to depend on how detailed your mailing list needs to get and what uh, level you need to sort. When you do a saturation, by definition, you're hitting all of the houses in a carrier or multiple carrier routes. So uh, do you have anything specific in mind, Chase, that we could, uh, that we could uh, be a little bit more specific? Because it really is going to depend on what you're trying to accomplish. A new stylist that I'm trying to promote. So, you know, in that particular case, you know, this gets a little bit tricky because you've got uh, particular ladies that, uh, you know, income, household, age that may be a better fit. If you do a saturation mailing, you know, who knows who's going to be seeing that. So, I don't know. I'd really want to, to target in on that, uh, the saturation mailing, because it's a general type of a service may be, may be something that would work just fine. It may just work fine, but uh, it's hard to say. I, I like to, whenever possible, uh, dial my list in to the extent that's available. Um, we found with one of our clients, they were mailing uh, for air conditioning service and repair. They were mailing all the homes that were 12 years and older in their geographic territories that they covered. We came in and looked at it and did what's called a prism analysis where we uh, submitted their list to uh, Nielsen Claritas and they told us which of the 66 prism codes were, uh, were their customers fell into. So we took something like 3,000 of their customers and, and uh, did an analysis on them and we found that out of the 66 prism codes, that we were able to shave out a good number of those and we took their mailing list and we narrowed it down by quite a bit. I think by a factor of about a third and then we were able to uh, concentrate more mailings on the more likely to buy people and so that's something that you could uh, that you could look at doing. Now I, I see you asking Chase how much does that cost. It's not that expensive to do the uh, to do the sorting. The key though is you've got to have a big enough database size to be able to make that work. So if you've got uh, at least several hundred customers then that could work. Uh, a couple thousand would be even better. Uh, how many do you have? 5,000. Okay, yeah, most definitely. So that's something you could actually talk to Dale about in our office. He does that kind of thing uh, down there in Waco. <laughs> If you take that list, we give it to you. Uh, we'll, we'll run it through a, a sorting program online with Nielsen Claritas, and they'll tell us here's where your customers uh, 
here's where your customers fall in this in this regard. Now, typically that's going to be fairly inexpensive to run that. Uh, if we do it online, it may cost a few hundred dollars at the most, uh, maybe even just a, a hundred to two hundred dollars. I can't remember exactly. Uh, they've got some additional services that they sell and some different kinds of ways you can do that that cost a little bit more, but on a base level sort, it shouldn't be that expensive. So that may be worth looking at, but then you're still going to have to um, do an analysis and see if if it may be cheaper just to go ahead and be a little bit more general on the targeting, but you're getting a cheap enough rate that the additional coverage is is worth it. So. Just something to think about. Uh, I just sent a postcard that you and I worked on to 5,000 people in the area. Saturation rate, we got about 10 people to respond. That seemed a little bit low, but I know that we need to keep hitting them that would get expensive, so that's why I know if we should narrow the list down a little bit. Yeah, I mean, saturation mailing, we're talking about eyelashes there, I think, right? Probably. Yeah, I mean, it's just one of those things. Um, the other thing that you could do is you can start to look at that and say, okay, let's analyze this, 5,000 people, how much does it cost to do the saturation mailing to 5,000 people with the printing and the saturation? I'm going to assume $1,000 total. That's not too bad. It's not too bad. Yeah, I mean, so we're talking 20 cents each, 14 cents for the mailing, probably 6 cents for the postcard, something like that, uh, roughly. Okay. Yep. Uh, you know, this is one of those things. It's it's just hard to say. That, that's I, I would probably just stick with the saturation mailing if it's that inexpensive, forty cents. I mean, you're probably going to double your cost if you go away from the saturation mailing, so you get it out to half as many people. Uh, this is one of those things you just got to decide and test and and try it and and be willing to live with the results, regardless of which way you go. So uh, were you able to make money on the 10? We should look at newspaper. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then if you made some money on those, you may want to just continue to send it and get that message out there. I mean, if you're losing money, that's a whole different issue. But, uh, you know, I would I would look at getting some repetition involved for sure because the fact is one postcard is just not – it's just not going to get that big of an effect. Okay, I was reading this book. I need to find this uh, detail in here. I haven't got to this part of the book. I listened to it on uh, on the uh, audio book. But Steve Jobs made a decision in the iPod marketing to spend a tremendous amount of money. Let me see if I can find this real quick. The Digital Hub, Apple Stores, iMac. Let's see. Let's see if I can find this real quick. I don't want to misstate it. Okay, here we go. What I'm looking at is the strategy that they used on advertising the iPod. It was is outrageous. Okay. Hang on, I'll find this. If I can't find it, I'll just make it up. I won't make it up, but I'll just recite it from memory. The idea here was buying the market they spent a tremendous amount of money. I'll have this for our, our Steve Jobs uh, webinar that we're going to do next month. Spent an inordinate amount of money on advertising for the iPod because he wanted to own the market. He spent what they called 100 times more than the entire category because they knew that they could get this halo effect. If people started getting iPods, then as they launched, and, and they already knew, of course, that the iPad, the iPhone was going to come out, and they needed to saturate the market and get people buying Apple products so they spent an ungodly amount of money on advertising, getting that out there. Something like uh, something like seven hundred million dollars on advertising, got an iPod in every single person's pocket, made it the de facto name of the category of digital MP3 players, 
and uh, the rest is history. So I'm not telling you to go spend a billion dollars, Chase, on this, this postcard mailing. I'm saying that if, if, uh, if you've got to buy your customers on the front end so that you can then have them for life, that may be a worthwhile strategy. Um, I see you've got another question, so go ahead and uh, ask it. What do you think about marketing automation programs like Office Autopilot, HubSpot, Infusionsoft, etc.? I think they're good. I think they're worthwhile. Typically, where those things tend to fall short is user error or <laughs> people that just don't use them. They think they're going to be automated when in reality they've got to be used and operated by humans. So uh, if you can use them, what are you thinking about using to automate, uh, like email sends or something like that? I think a company in your situation, uh, it's a no-brainer. You've got to use something like that so that you can get that out there, uh, you know, very, very consistently is the key. So I don't know what you're doing now. Maybe you've just got some kind of a, an email sending program, but you've got to get something where you can get that get things out to your customers. You've got 5,000 customers. You should be working that list like crazy to get people in there. Um, one of the things you also might want to consider is uh, some very interesting specific, specific targeted mail. I'll give you an example of this. This comes out of the MYM book. I'll, I'll give you the example from the MYM book, <clears throat> and then you can relate it to what you're doing. Okay, so uh, for example, there was a letter that was written and sent to, uh, now let me make sure I've got the story right. Well, I mean, it could be any situation, so I, I don't remember the exact one from the book, but I'll just uh, give you an example. We sent out a letter specifically to CPAs, and I think it came from a restaurant. And it said, uh, "Dear John, you're a you're a CPA. Uh, this is your lucky week. I'm giving all CPAs in the area." And then it was some free offer. Maybe it was maybe it was a golf shop. <laughs> it's some free offer. And uh, the reason that I'm being so nice to CPAs, I'll tell you when you come in. And the idea here is very simplistic. It's to pick out a specific group that's identifiable, that there's some pride associated with being in that group, and sending them a special offer. You can use whatever rationale you want in that offer. It doesn't have to be anything super special. You don't have to have some overly interesting reason why you like CPAs or why you chose them, but there does need to be something and send it out there. So you know, as you look at uh, your target market, you may want to find a way to segment it and identify different types of people. Maybe it's school teachers or maybe it's... Uh, you know, waitresses, or maybe it's, I, I don't know, whatever you could find. School teachers might be one you can identify and pinpoint. But something that you can send to people and say, hey, you know, you're this type of person, and as a result, I'd like to uh, give you this offer. Maybe you can identify people by the types of cars they drive. Maybe you could find all the Prius owners that are females. You could say, hey, you know, you're an energy efficient person, so we're going to give you whatever offer. You just have to be a little bit creative with that. But th the more you can target I think the better off you're going to be, uh, generally speaking. Now, I, I don't want to scare you off of the saturation mail because it is so inexpensive, and, and your services are fairly generally universally usable. But uh, just think in terms of how can you target? What could you do to target? Could you get involved in some joint ventures? Could you go to uh, some local businesses that have female customers that you could then approach through through those those means, and then also again, like we're talking about, you brought this up is is really working that customer list. I would think in terms of maybe some kind of a frequency program, or some kind of a club, some kind of a something of uh, additional benefits that you could give these ladies. Go go into the MYM book and read the section on joint ventures, and uh, frequency programs and clubs in all of those areas, and just saturate your brain with ideas in those regards because I think you could do something that's that's actually quite fun and effective in getting these ladies involved in something beyond just a stylist shop or just a haircut. Get them involved in something that's a little bit bigger, a little bit more social, a little bit, you know, more than just their haircut every month or two, okay? So take a look at that. Just Just some ideas. Just Get a little bit creative there. 
Okay, any other questions on other topics? Chase, uh, I don't have any other people typing anything in, so you're welcome to ask another question or anybody else. This, question, this call only lasts as long as your questions do, so if you've got something you want to talk about, let's talk about it. Uh, also, you're welcome to uh, uh, raise your hand and I can talk to you uh, over the phone instead of through the uh, typing mechanism, either way. Okay, I've got several people in here. I see the window nerd. How you doing? Marty, good to see you on there. Jamie, glad to talk to you. Just had a good conversation uh, with Ben yesterday about your website, making some additional changes on that uh, beyond uh, what he had come up with the first time. So you should be seeing that from us pretty darn quick here. Okay, any other questions? If there are none, we'll we'll go ahead and suspend the call and everybody can move on to other things they've got planned for the day. Otherwise, type now or raise your hand now or forever hold your peace. I'm going to give it the old going once, going twice. Okay. Thanks so much. It's been a pleasure talking to you today, uh, Chase. Good to have you on here. Others uh, as well. Thank you for participating. And we will be back next week with our uh, going gorilla call. So that ought to be a lot of fun. Some gorilla marketing techniques next Thursday. So until then, have a great day and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye now. The organizer has